Right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about these two devices and how I think they might be working. And this is the perpetual battery that we made in the perpetual battery video, and this is the wave gener generator that we made in wave generation and new way forward. Now, in order to understand the mecha mechanism of this, what you really need to refer to are a couple of papers that came out about five years ago that looked at the activity of a drop of salt water across a graphene surface. It turns out that when you roll a drop of water across a surface, you get um, electron transfer and charge separation. Now, this is just a physical property of materials, and we know this. If you grab a piece of uh, plastic and rub it with a bit of silk, you'll build up a static charge. So there is a relationship, I think, about what's going on here and triboelectricity. Triboelectricity is that rubbing action that you do. So there's a definite relationship between them. And of course, triboelectricity is the reason Kelvin's water dropper works. That relationship was explored on graphene sheets because the charge separation can be made to do work if you can extract the current faster than it can recombine. And of course, graphene is able to do that. I think it turns out so can an awful lot of other materials. Obviously there has to be an imbalance and if you read the, that patent that I'm talking about where Mr Clark and patent number 4153757 he talks about an imbalance as well. Now he talks about an imbalance um, relating to resistance. Resistance of a property of material has two main components. One is the resistivity of the material, which is just an innate property of the material to resist. And the other is the geometry of the material. Now, that makes sense if you think about it, because if something's thicker, it has less resistance. Something's thinner, it has more resistance. So he used, as his exemplars, two different metals. And the resistance difference between them is, is fairly minor, but there is a difference in the resistance. So transport in metal, obviously, is a lot faster than uh, in a carbon. That difference in resistance allowed for the extraction of the charge separation that happens naturally when an ion-carrying ion fluid moves across a surface. That's what I think. In order to harness that, you need a difference in resist resistance of the materials that you're using. Now, Mr. Clark talked about different materials, taking account of the different resistivity of those materials, but you can remember change the resist resistance of a material by changing its geometry. So we can use the same material on either one as long as we change the geometry so the resistance differs. Now, what was surprising about this, actually, is that it worked at all, because it's symmetric. It would work far, far better if we changed the geometry so the upstream electrode was thinner than the downstream electrode. Now we're talking about a material that acts upon a surface. So clearly, surface area is going to be a key factor in that. So if we can increase the accessible, and it has to be accessible surface area for material, we should be able to increase the production rate of this as a generator. Now, I used these because I had them and I just wanted to test that basic idea. They're perhaps, in fact, they're definitely not the best material and not by a long shot because they're a bit of clay, a bit of graphite and an awful lot of wax. So it's just not a very good material, but we got an awesome result out of it. Now, obviously, this is a, a device in its early stage of development. If you've ever had a look at devices in their early stage of development, they hardly are very promising. But I think, in theory, there's a lot of interest that could be got from this in terms of improving its ability to generate and the cost of its generation. Because, of course, it's carbon. It's really cheap. If you bother to look at the first electric motor, which was essentially a piece of wire in a pool of mercury, there's no way you would um, be able to tell from that how ubiquitous and useful electric motors are. Now, I'm not saying that this will become ubiquitous and useful. We don't really know. We do know, however, that nothing happens if you do nothing about it. So trying something is the way really to move forward. But trying something doesn't guarantee success. But not trying something certainly guarantees failure. So we have to have a look at these things and think, is that worth trying? And in my mind, it's worth trying, which is obviously why I'm working on it. And I think that can be improved a hell of a lot better by simple techniques like that. 
Now, the reason I chose these rods is because they're just readily accessible, readily available. They stick in these little plastic bits so I could make something really quickly. It took me about an hour to make that. Very quick. Very cheap. And that's why I chose those things. There are obviously far better configurations of this. Now, we have done lots of videos on this kind of stuff where you can make these clay plates. These clay plates are carbon-loaded graphite, actually, graphite-loaded clay. Now, I've done videos on how to make these, and so this can be replicated really, really easily. If you're worried about the firing, I've also done a video on making a kiln, so you can fire these really easily as well. So these are something that have a much, much larger surface area. There is no wax impregnation in them and should respond really very well. Of course, manipulating the resistance of a particular plate is a piece of cake. We just add a little bit more graphene in, uh, graphite into one plate, a little bit less in another, and we'll have two different materials that should be able to uh, fulfil the requirement of Mr Clark's patent. So the minimum you would need to understand this stuff, I would say, is to review the videos that we've done, the uh, wave power, video, the perpetual battery video, this video, and certainly that patent. That would be a minimum that would get you off the ground and enable you to have a, I think, reasonable starting point on investigating this and progressing this much further. Um, it would help if you had a look at that stuff on charge separation that I've been talking about, because that will introduce the idea of what it is that I think is going on with this. Now, the mechanism of this operation is stunningly simple. It's actually not that much different from rubbing silk on a bit of plastic. So, and, and that's no surprise. It should be a very simple mechanism. You would expect that. If it's a complicated mechanism, you're probably wrong. It's just Occam's razor, and it's a very simple mechanism, I think. Anyway, I thought I would share those thoughts with you, because there seems to be a lot of interest in what I think is the operating mechanism. I hope it was of interest, and thank you very much for watching.